Well, hello there. In today's video, we're going to be discussing some drama I started by nearly cutting off my thumb. We're going to talk about my diesel heater already having problems. We're going to answer some viewer questions and we're going to see if I can't replicate green bean casserole in a wok. Oh, and I got a new job. So you know how my diesel heater has been awesome and great and working until it isn't? Go figure, the Chinese diesel heater already had an issue. It's cold here up in the high desert. There was some really cold nights under freezing temperature. And so of course I went to use my diesel heater and all of a sudden it's not working very well. It's not pushing out hot air. And then it started giving me uh, error codes. So I was emailing back and forth with the company and um, even re-ran my fuel line. There's diesel fuel everywhere. I'm like high on the fumes. I don't know how I'm gonna get it off the floor over here in the trailer. Thinking that maybe I wasn't having as good of gravity feed as I was anticipating. Um, the fuel pump sounded like it was working, so I certainly didn't think it was that. I reset the whole fuel line and uh, long story short, it was the fuel filter was broken. You can see the tip of it there is curved up and kind of broken. And then the fuel pump itself, while it was making noise, it wasn't actually pushing fuel. So back when I did the installation, TSTUDT Ojibwe mentioned, get extra fuel pumps, you will thank me. Well, I do want to thank you because the fuck, excuse me, because the fuel pump was in fact out. So even though it was making clicking noises, it wasn't actually pushing fluid. And the thing is, is I took pictures and video and sent it on to the company. Um, Cause even though they're all the way over in China, they're actually giving me really good customer service. So long story short, uh, the fuel pump was out, but I had an extra on hand. Uh, so I switched out the fuel pump after rerunning the whole fuel line and thankfully, you know, I found out that the fuel filter had somehow broken in the uh, hose line as well. So I mean, there was a couple different problems, but primarily, I mean, maybe the little chip of that went into the fuel line. I just don't know, but I had an extra fuel pump on hand. Thank God because of that viewer. So thank you. You're right. I will thank you later. Thank you now. Um, but uh, they're gonna send me a new diesel heater anyway. So the company is standing by their product. Um, so even though I'm not very happy with the fact that the fuel pump had already gone out and the fuel filter had broken, uh, I am very satisfied with the fact that they stand behind their product and they're sending me a new one. On a lucky note, if you guys remember back in summer, I helped Robert reinstall a diesel heater into his van. Well, he kept a whole bunch of the old parts just to harvest for parts uh, because these things are known to have issues. And so he had an extra fuel filter. So we swapped out the fuel filter. We swapped out the fuel pump that I had ordered online. And now it seems to be running just fine. Now, I went down a black hole of YouTube videos and internet content on these diesel heaters and I decided that I wanted to redo the way that I had my heat shield on the top part where it goes into the floor. I saw someone say below the gasket that's already there if you put another heat shield and you have fire block caulk underneath that you know, you just have more of a guarantee that things are, are going to go your way. So I redid that, but when I was cutting the aluminum plate, it decided to cut me back. Essentially, the hole saw made it spin, and I tried to stop the spinning and just ran it right through. It's pretty deep. I thought I should go get a stitch, but my go-to is hydrogen peroxide. And I highly recommend anyone traveling because, like, out here, I don't want to go to the doctor. My health insurance is the type that you don't want to use because you know it barely covers you so this stuff is called bleed stop it's awesome and it really does stop the bleeding in seconds uh, because there was it was like a bloodbath around here 
there's actually still uh, where's there's like several rocks that look like something got murdered around here I splashed water on most of them just so that if anyone came around they wouldn't think that I actually did kill anyone long story short yeah, I sliced right through my finger but I have a new heat shield on top I have the exhaust wrap on the bottom I have an expanded area so that it's even farther away from wool because I had a problem no because I was watching too much stuff on the internet and made myself paranoid so this is a PSA that as a do-it-yourselfer that doesn't know what they're doing the internet can be helpful but it can also make you a mental patient so that was that now in order to get the back door down an additional PSA is I mention it in the video where I talk about trailer security and different ways that I keep the trailer safe and I mentioned like on my cam bar lock to absolutely have a weatherproof lock um, because otherwise this is what you're gonna end up getting these padlocks that I had on the drop-down door are so rusted that I had no choice but to borrow a saw from someone that's down the way thankfully and uh, cut my locks off and then I went and I bought uh, locks that are specific for being outside I think I have some linked in the description box below if I don't I certainly will add those in I had I had done the WD-40 and wait 30 minutes hit it with a hammer I mean I tried to get these unstuck before I resorted to cutting into them but this is why you want a weatherproof lock on your trailer as to my new job it really was kind of just the universe brought things together and answered some prayers because I was hoping to have a job where I could work online, I can work at my own pace, um, more of a freelance type gig, and that's exactly what I got. So I don't want to jinx myself because it's so new and I just got done completely psyching myself out about this diesel heater thing. So uh, essentially I'm going to be helping to create content for uh, travel channel they have a online presence in a couple different ways and I'm gonna be uh, writing content and also doing some video work for them some editing work and whatnot so I get to work at my own pace I am paid per project that I complete so it is one of those things where uh, I can do as much or as little as I want but obviously <laughs> I'm gonna err on the side of giving effort so I get paid um, but it's a pretty cool gig uh, and it pays pretty well so I'm happy and uh, as it progresses and I don't get fired I'll give more information but like I said it's real new so I'm gonna try not to jinx myself especially under current circumstances of me uh, pressing my luck okay. and then I thought we could do uh, some viewer questions just because there's been a couple that I thought it would just be easier to answer on a video um, but I probably need to grab my phone to have them accessible all right JJ says I hope your puppy is much safer with the paw protectors thank you her uh, lacerations have almost fully healed and they do seem to be protecting her feet a lot better I'm really pleased that a lot of you uh, said that the video was helpful in regards to where to go get your dog a bath and also uh, about training your dog to wear the boots uh, JJ's real question is I was wondering how the solar has been working out the solar has been working out great uh, you know I still only am using it to charge like my phone I do charge the Jackery off the big solar panels now that I have the 12 volt outlet in there and then the diesel heater now that it's working again it's all good <laughs> And that's the only other thing so I'm still looking into fridges um, I'm trying not to act with haste just because I want to get something that is both efficient has enough capacity and also is in a price range where I'm comfortable it's not like I don't have a cooler that's doing fine so I'm in no rush so the solar isn't being overwhelmed as of yet so maybe once I get a fridge, I find that I need to adjust, but so far so great. It's been doing fine. Mellow Nomadic Adventures says, I think the booties are a great idea, especially being on that rough terrain. 
I think it's better to spend 60 or $70 on some booties than to spend six or $700 on a vet if something happened and Riot needs stitches or surgery. It's curious if you have spent any time in New Mexico. Yes, an extensive amount of time. And, and that's actually what got me in love with more nomadic living is New Mexico. So the five, six years before I went full time, I used to take a cross country road trip every year from Chicago to Las Vegas for a canine conference. And I started driving because I, it, it made more sense to me to drive with two dogs and it was like the only time I was you know I own my own business so the only time you take off of work is for a conference but in order to kind of make that more of a vacation I turned it into a road trip and I would always go through New Mexico I particularly fell in love with truth or consequences um, there's some really great boondocking uh, along the way as well as Taos I'm a huge fan of I'm also a huge fan of the Deming area. Uh, I, I really, really love all of, uh, I, I really love all of New Mexico. I'm a huge fan of high altitude desert, um, arid areas. Uh, I, I love um, Cloudcroft. That really gets cold in the winter though. So I'm a huge fan of New Mexico and um, it is the first place that I fell in love with that made me want to discover more of the country and to live in nature is because if if I if I ever settle down I could see me settling down in New Mexico I really could it seems to have a spiritual element to it I think it was uh, the Dalai Lama that said that Taos in particular has a special vibration to it and I have to say that that's true if you're a person that believes in that stuff and is maybe sensitive to it um, I, I really love New Mexico Let's go ahead. We're going to be making green bean casserole in my cast iron wok to see if that works or if it's a disaster. To wrap up today's video, I am going to try to replicate one of my favorite dishes of the season, green bean casserole. But since I don't have an oven and we can't have fires right now, I am going to attempt to recreate it in my cast iron wok. I'm going to be following the instructions on the back of the French's fried onions recipe box minus the three quarter cup of milk because I don't have milk and it might have been smart for me to carry maybe some condensed milk that will go on my grocery list for the future. So in lieu, I'm going to use a little bit of mayonnaise. That's as close as I think I have to milk. So away we go. Robert, if you end up watching this video, the recipe calls for black pepper. I'm going to go according to the recipe. I'm not adding any extra in. Hopefully you don't find it very spicy, but well, I'll record your reaction anyway. <clears throat> Since my wok doesn't have a lid and I'm too frugal to spend the $40 for the Dutch oven, I'm simply gonna cover it with this metal plate and let it bake. Set it and forget it, Ryan. You are so dusty. It looks to have gotten a little burnt around the edges. Okay, this is how it looks on the plate. It pretty much looks like green bean casserole. So that's a plus. Now you gotta taste it. All right. So you've had green bean casserole before. The whole philosophy is can you make it on a, on a range top with a wok. Mm. I feel like it tastes pretty much the same, it just burnt on the edges and the bottom of the wok a little bit. thought they were a little crunchier, but maybe that's just the versions I've had. It's got a good flavor. Lots of good flavor. You didn't want to use the strawberry milk? <laughs> 
So the only alteration I had to make is a little bit of mayo in replace of the milk. But there you have it, folks. You can make green bean casserole in a cast iron wok on a range top boondocking in the desert. Thanks so much for watching this really long video. I really hope someone got something out of it. And we'll see you next time.